I love to see your vinyl shirts. That's my high school thing. So. It depends. A lot of times on the program and the coach. Um, so, men's basketball, they pretty much, if I'm in town, will have me visit with every recruit they bring in. Um, uh, some other sports may have me visit with higher profile recruits. Um, some, they don't ask me, but if they ask me to be involved, uh, I'm involved. I sit with the young people and their parents and tell them a little bit about WVU and my division and my impression. It's really easy for me right now to talk about why I think they should choose WVU. Because I just chose it, right? And so I can tell them what I have found and what led me here. Um, and uh, so that's that's really helpful. And we have a transfer, particularly if we know there's been some kind of issue. I'm definitely going to dive a little deeper into that. If there's, you know, if they were dismissed from their team where they were for some uh, behavioral issue, that doesn't mean that we won't take them. Um, I believe in redemption and second chances when they're deserved. Uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely. Uh, something that I'll spend a little more time diving in on. And what attributes do you prefer to ask you? It's a good question. I think for me, want somebody who's committed to academics as well as athletics. And I understand, particularly with male athletes, but more so with our female athletes, they all think I'm just going to play sports forever, even though you tell them the percentages of people that actually get to make money playing sports after college, it's not very high. Um, but there has to be a commitment to get your education. Um, and, and if we ever lose that um, in, in, in uh, college sports, I think that's probably the time where I probably look at doing something else. Um, you know, there's been a lot that's changed in college sports in the last five, ten years. In the last year, there's been a lot of change. But that piece of it, being tethered to education and the pursuit of a degree and what it can mean for you and your family, um, it is really, really important. And, it, and that particularly resonates with me as a first generation college student. I see the opportunities that my girls got that I never got. We never took a vacation other than going to the lake when I was growing up. We couldn't afford it. So my girls have gotten to go and see and experience all kinds of different places and cultures and um, but it's because I was committed to get an education, my wife was committed to get an education, and so the difference that it makes is really important. So my goal would be that we would pursue athletes who are really serious about getting an education. So what's your expectation for football? Well, I never speak in terms of uh, win and loss expectation, because as soon as you do that, that's the number that everybody comes in on. And there's a lot of things that are outside of, of your control. You can't control injuries. You can't control uh, schedule. You can't control some of those things. So I think for me, um, it would be, one, that our student athletes were getting a great experience. And two, uh, that, that we, were, we had momentum with uh, our fans across the state when we were representing the university in the way we want to be represented. And I know people always want you to go to what is your win-loss expectation? I get asked that a lot about a lot of sports. Um, but I just don't talk in those terms. Um, and we've had a lot of success at the programs I've been in um, in terms of win-loss record. And I've never really made it my particular focus. It's always, how can we do the best job of recruiting good student-athletes, keeping good student-athletes, and helping them to get better while they're here? Um, what's your opinion on all the uh, conference I hate uh, TV drives conference alignment, right? I mean, that's why people make decisions. That's the only reason why you have two schools that are on the West Coast that are going to go into the Big Ten. They're going to cash a bigger check uh, from the TV revenues. Um, I hate what it does to long-term rivalries, to geography. I hate that we take um, women's soccer teams and send them to Lubbock, Texas, flying over however many other teams that, that they have to fly over. Um, because the football games were more valuable in the Big 12 than they were in the Big East, for instance. Um, but that's not going to change because that TV revenue is the number one revenue stream and there's so much pressure to compete financially and, and salaries and benefits and facilities and all those different things that, that uh, the, you can always follow the money. That's always the way it's going to 
that it's going to draft college realignment. And so, um, is not going to stop as TV deals come up. Um, you're seeing it play out. I don't know how much you all read, but in the ACC, everybody knows the Pac-12 is uh, shaped. But the ACC, they're arguing all because Florida State and Clemson is trying to compete with, with SEC and Big Ten football programs. They're getting a lot smaller checks, and they're like, hey, we're more valuable than Wake Forest. Um, and so uh, either eventually, if they get an opportunity to go into one of those conferences, that's where they're going to go. Um, and ESPN may say, hey, we don't want to pay for all these other teams, but we'll pay the SEC more money to pick those two off. That's how OU and Texas lead the Big 12 to, go to, the, AC, to the SEC. Um, so that's going to continue to happen. Um, what I take pride in is that uh, WVU, because it's, even though we're not a hugely populated state, it's a brand that everybody in the state follows and in this region people follow. So in the Big 12 right now, when they do the metrics of most valuable brands, we're in the top four no matter which metric they, they look at. And it's because of that passion and that following. So I think we're going to always uh, be a valuable commodity. We're going to always have opportunities. Um, I do think Commissioner Yormark's done a great job of taking us from being the most unstable conference to behind the SEC and Big Ten, we're now the most stable conference, right? And so uh, that's happening in a short period of time, and the future of the Big 12 is really bright. And uh, so uh, I wish I knew exactly how things were going to shake out. Uh, I could probably make a, a, a lot of uh, money helping schools get to that destination if I knew where I was going to go. I don't, uh, but I do know that as long as TV contracts are involved, um, and as long as there's an equity in what the league's payout is, they're going to continue to be reshuffled. Okay. All right, you've been on the job about five months or so. What would you say is the biggest strengths at West Virginia and the biggest things we need to, uh, as a university, well, I think the biggest strength is that passion. There's not very many people that command the statewide support that we do. Um, and uh, I'm seeing it this week. I was in Wheeling Monday. Uh, last night I was in Beckley. Tonight I'm here and then tomorrow night in Martinsburg. And so I'm getting to see all over the state the, the passion that people have for WU and Mountaineers. And, and even when you see the flying WV, it's not the state's flag, but I think it's perceived to be the state's flag. Um, and, you know, that's really a, a special thing that not everybody has. Maybe only Arkansas and Nebraska have that kind of following. Everybody else has, I was at Missouri, the only Power 5 institution in the state, but you had the Chiefs and at that time the Rams, and then you had the Royals and the uh, Cardinals. And so, like, there's just other teams for people to root for. Um, our baseball team had an unbelievable year, first in the Big 12. Let's, let's give it up for them. Yeah. And um, we've had, out of our top ten crowds, probably four or five of them, five of our top ten crowds this, this year. We've had good weather, we had a great team. I met over 4,000 fans at, at a game this last uh, weekend and over 10,000 for, for the series. And, um, you know, I, I think not, every, not everybody can do that. In terms of uh, weaknesses, um, certainly the geography is tough. We spend more on travel than everybody else spends. And so, um, that's tough, and, our, and, and we're not dealing with one of the bigger budgets in the league. So you put those two factors together, it's going to always mean that we have to be more efficient uh, with, with our other resources than, than anybody else is. Um, but we're prepared to do that. Uh, I think for me, the, the biggest thing is finding a way to incrementally grow revenue. Not everything is going to be a, uh, Matt and I discussed a strategy a few weeks ago that we think can bring us a half million dollars. That's a big you know, that's at least a triple, maybe a home run. But if we can host 10 birthday parties that we make a couple thousand bucks on each one, um, that's, those are little singles or bunts, but, but we're getting runners on base, and, and, and that's, that's helpful as well. So we have to find a way to look at every single way we can capitalize and, and make money. And uh, I think if we do that, we do a really good job of it, then we give it back to our programs, and, and that will help with the competitive center. But the budget's a real challenge. Oh, I hate Pitt. I don't allow my kids to curse, but I allow them to say one word, but it's got to be in conjunction with two other words. What's the hardest sport to manage at West Virginia? Uh, probably the one that requires the most time is football, just the sheer numbers, right? I mean, they're you know three or four times the size of any other uh, uh, roster. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily harder, it's just more, more time consuming. There's more eyeballs on it, there's more interest in it, um, you got more athletes, so there's you know more more issues.
So you mentioned the uh, how well the baseball team is doing. When you see a sport or a team doing that well, what's kind of your role as the athletic director to keep that going and make sure that success continues into the future? Yeah, I think it's sitting down with the coach. I always consider the coach to be the subject matter expert and, and find out from them what are ways that we can sustain the success and even take the next step. So Matt happens to be the baseball sport program administrator, so he's taking full credit uh, for uh, all the wins this year. Uh, but he and I have already had multiple conversations um, about, hey, how can we reward our coaches for a great season? How can we keep them in place? What can we do to enhance the facility? What can we do to give them um, more uh, opportunities from a budget standpoint? Um, you know, some of that you can go out and get donors help, some of that you can pencil thinking, hey, if we finish this out strong and win the Big 12 and make it to a regional, can we increase season ticket costs, can we increase single game? So, and then you start to pencil that and say, okay, well, we know we have this much revenue, let's give it back to the program. Um, so, those are conversations that we're already having, but you also have to wait because the coach really knows best. I mean, they're the ones that deal with it every day, they're, they know what their needs are the most, and they're right now busy, you know, coach is, is trying to be fit. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's that's their focus. So we'll sit down sh shortly as the season ends and say, okay, what are the things that we can do now? And what are the things that we can put on our long-term, medium-term uh, list of priorities that will help sustain uh, the baseball program success? If someone had interest, not just as an athlete, but um, to professionally go into sports, what would be your advice uh, for, for someone interested in that? I'm going to be really careful here because I feel like uh, I wouldn't choose to do anything different. I feel like anytime a college kid or a high school kid asks me about my job, I end up trying to feel like I just basically talk them out of it. Um, there's a lot of hard days, right? I mean, I've moved my family a lot. I've missed, I've missed five months of seeing my daughters every year. And they're going to be out of my house before very long. I've been at bowl games three times when they were doing their Christmas program. You never get those experiences back. I watched them on FaceTime. Um, it's, it's a demanding job. People see the fun parts. They see you at the game. They know you make a good living. But there is a lot you have to give up, which is why I would tell you if it's not your passion and your purpose, don't pursue it. Because early on, those jobs, we have a lot of people that make $30,000, $40,000 or more sixty plus hours a week. Um, and then if you follow college athletics, you know, there's a lot of turnover in all industries right now, but college athletics, uh, I think we, over the course of the last year, 18 months, have seen 40% turnover in our staff. Um, that's huge, almost half of our people have turned over. Um, and so uh, there is a lot of burnout, there is a lot of pressure, there is a lot of expectations. You do a lot of work for maybe not 365 days a year, but well over 300 days a year. And most people only care about that scoreboard on those 12 Saturdays. Um, and, and, and maybe some uh, with those you know, basketball games. But most people don't see any of the other work that you do. Uh, and nor, nor do they really care. And so you really got to be, it has to be your purpose to want to pour into young people and see them grow and develop. Because if, the, if it's not, you're going to get beat up and beat down uh, a little bit. But uh, I always wanted to have a job. So my dad and my grandfather and my uncle all it is most people's goal uh, to want to work there. It's a really good paying job in, in the place where I grew up, one of the only ones. And I worked there in the summers. So they had a program uh, to help pay your way through college. And when I got done with college, they offered me a job. And I just couldn't think of anything worse. Not because it was a hot, hard job, but because in a factory, you usually have this one part of the process. And you don't get to see how things start, nor how they end. You know, so like my job, in this paper mill, those huge rolls of paper, was to cut the course. You ever seen masking tape or, or, or box tape? That deal in the middle, that's called the core. So I would measure that out and cut it. And that was my job. And, and put it, and then they roll the paper on And it just drove me crazy. Like, I don't even know where this paper is going to go. Who's going to use this paper? What's it going to be used for? And so I wanted a job where I felt like I got to see people come in, grow and develop, and, and and I want to see the end of the process when they get their degree, hopefully with a, a, a diploma in one hand and a championship ring on the other. Um, and so 
That's what led me into college athletics. There's a lot of tough days. This has been a tough week, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but what, what keeps you going is knowing that you're part of that process and you get to see it every day. And uh, that's one of the great pleasures that I have. And it's probably the part that's kept me in this industry. Uh, when I didn't have a Power 5 job, I wasn't making a lot of money. And I was moving my wife around. It was always in pursuit of opportunities um, to, uh, to be around young people once we grow into that. Hockey would definitely be on down the line. 
because it is an expensive sport. It is a fun sport. I love hockey. Um, uh, do we club hockey? Yeah. Okay. So um, in North Texas, we had hockey. We had club hockey. I would actually go watch them play. Of course, there's a lot of rinks uh, in North Texas. Do, do we have a hockey rink? We do? Yeah. Maybe I'll start playing hockey. Yeah. So I'm still learning uh, about the opportunities around me. So, um, but uh, yeah, I would say uh, when we do our facility plan, we'll do a thorough assessment of sports. The sports we currently offer and other potential sports that we could sponsor. Um, and we'll probably have cost and roster management side of those. Um, but as you know, you're always, or you might know, if you guys say tall animals, you're always chasing uh, that ratio. So whatever your campus ratio is, which most uh, higher education institutions tend to be a little more female than male, then you start with football, which is a huge roster number. It, it really limits um, kind of the opportunities for adding in sports, but uh, it doesn't mean that we limit something. Uh, aside from like West Virginia, WVU, what's your favorite part about Morgantown? I think it's really just uh, the beauty of it. Like, I grew up, people think Oklahoma is all flat. Eastern Oklahoma is actually not flat, but it's not as gorgeous as, as this. Um, and I would make it even more than just Morgantown, like flying in uh, Beckley last night. And it's absolutely beautiful. Like I'm looking from the plane, uh, taking phone uh, photos uh, uh, with my phone like a tourist. Uh, but you know, I think when you guys grow up here, you probably don't realize uh, how fortunate you are to see it every day. But it's uh, it's absolutely uh, beautiful. Uh, when I moved to Morgantown, everything was dead. So I will be honest. Like how it looks today is completely different. My my wife and daughters were just in this last weekend. Uh, from Texas and went to the baseball game, but my wife said, like, I can't, this doesn't even look like the same place that, that we came to in December for the press conference. And so, um, I really, the outdoor opportunities, the hikes, um, the things you can go and do, the kayaking and, and uh, rafting and stuff in this state, uh, fishing, I, I love to fish. Um, there's some great golf courses. I never golf much, but, but uh, I've been offered to golf at a lot of great courses and they are gorgeous courses. I uh, I think that's probably my favorite part. Last one more question. Okay. All right. A few years ago, when we started this class and had our first interview, we had a student who said we should always wrap it up by asking the, the guests to give a few pieces of advice to graduating students and, and underclassmen. If you were to talk to 16, 17, 18 year old kids, what would be one or two pieces of advice that you have? Don't panic if you don't know what you want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I changed majors as a junior. And my parents were furious. Like, when I went home to tell them as a junior that I was changing majors from computer science to be a teacher, I thought I was going to teach and coach in the public schools. That's what, that's what my goal was. I think we're really not happy. Um, but it's okay to, to take a little time to figure that out. Um, what's really important is that you're working hard, you're passing classes, enjoy every moment of what's left of your senior year here, of college, um, because the responsibility that comes when you uh, are actually out of college, like, it's just not as much fun. Um, when, you, when you have that pressure of paying for bills and uh, all those things, I've never had uh, more expendable cash help than when uh, I was in college and had a full scholarship, got a full Pell Grant, and Oklahoma had like another kind of Oklahoma Pell Grant. I, I mean, I was like buying everything up uh, when those checks would uh, cut. And so it was a uh, great uh, time, enjoy it, but find your passion and your purpose. Uh, and there's, 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 books, there's a book out there called The Purpose Driven Life. Um, it's a great, it's a great book. There's several books out there that kind of help you 